Number 15. My now ex-wife and I had just gotten married and moved into a new neighborhood. We moved in in the winter, and as spring came, we noticed there were multiple dead animals, birds, squirrels, and raccoons in the yard. We cleaned them all up and started to do improvements to the outside of the house and painting on the inside. I started to notice strange things going on, keys not where I left them, stuff like that, small. I thought I was just being forgetful. Then things slowly started to escalate. Well in bed, I could swear I could hear a barely audible conversation, like a radio in a far room. As soon as I would try to focus on it, it would go away. I started to hear footsteps at the other end of the house. One night, while laying in bed, I heard a huge crash which woke me up out of dead sleep. I went into the kitchen and saw my kid's hamster cage on the floor about 15 feet from where it was. We put it on the fridge at night because we had a cat and didn't want it getting to it. Now I know what you are thinking, cat knocked it off, but this cage had to fly over a breakfast bar and a kitchen table to get to its resting place. Then things got ugly. I would be sitting at home watching TV and I would have this uncontrollable thought. What would it be like to be possessed? Or, I want to be possessed. I couldn't get this thought out of my head. Couldn't concentrate on anything but that. I would literally have to say in my head, I love God, I love Jesus, over and over to get this original thought out of my head. I need to add that I am not a religious person. As soon as I would leave the house, I would be fine. Not one thought. But as soon as I pulled in the driveway, it would start up again, uncontrollably. I thought I was going crazy. I sat down with my wife and looked her dead in the eyes and said, I think I am going crazy. I've been having weird thoughts. She turned white and before I could say anything more, she said that you want to be possessed? Come to find out, for the past month, she's been having the exact same thoughts. Then we started to compare stories. She told me that she was laying in bed without me. I worked nights at the time. And she could hear a man whispering through the baby monitor while our child was fussing. Needless to say, we moved out within the month. Her oldest daughter was still in school and we had moved across town. I had to pick her up at that house on my days off when she got dropped off by the bus. As soon as I turned the corner, I would get those thoughts. I would sit in my car in the driveway and not even go inside and wait. Number 14. My friend's dad is an ex-marine. He has been a paramedic, firefighter, and security guard, so there's practically nothing on earth that can frighten this motherfucker. His family used to live in a very old house built in the 1800s. One day, my friend's dad was at home alone waiting for the rest of the family to get back with dinner. Now this man is the most honest man that I have ever met. There would be no reason to lie about this. He was sitting on the couch downstairs when he says he heard footsteps coming from upstairs. He walks down the main hallway and looks up to the banister for the upstairs hallway. He then said that there was a shadowy figure that glided across the upstairs railing from one side to the other until it was out of view. Right after he saw the supposed apparition, he heard the loudest, most blood-curdling scream he had ever heard in his life. Immediately after the scream, all of the lights in the house went out and he found himself standing in the pitch black. He then ran out to the front porch and waited for the rest of the family to return. My buddy said that when they got back, he remembers the horrified look on his dad's face. He said he had never seen that look on him and has never seen it since. Number 13. My nephew lives with me in an old farmhouse built in the 1840s. When he was about four, maybe five, he told me that there was a little boy named Charlie who lived in our house. He said Charlie had never heard of video games and that Charlie's dad left him home all by himself. This was around the same time he had an imaginary friend named Mr. Cat, so I wrote it off. 
A couple of weeks later, I was shaving with the bathroom door open and thought I could see my nephew kind of looking in at me out of the corner of my eye. I stuck my head around and could see him from behind messing with an old china cabinet we keep important stuff in, and just as I walked into the room, I could see my nephew sitting in the living room watching TV. He couldn't have crossed that much distance that fast or silently. I asked him about it and he said, oh yeah, that was Charlie. He said there's a really super book in there from when you were a little boy. And at the bottom of the stack of old documents and stuff in the china cabinet is a book I got as a gift when I was a kid. I didn't know it was there. It was under two boxes of documents and couldn't be seen until the boxes were lifted out. The little boy wasn't transparent, he didn't float, he didn't look spooky, he just looked like a kid. Number 12. My dad once told me a story about one of his cousins. The cousin used to live with his family in an apartment building. On the floor above them lived an old widowed woman whose young son around 24 or 25 served in the Indian Army and had died during a bomb attack somewhere in North India. A few weeks after the funeral, my uncle started having dreams about the son who had died. He would tell my dad and his mom that the son keeps knocking on the door in the dream and just stands there once the door is opened. He had the same dream for two weeks straight until one night before dinner, he opened his front door to go down to the lobby and saw the son standing in front of him. He quickly shut the door, freaked out for a few minutes behind the door and opened it to still find the son standing there. I'm not sure what happened right after, but my uncle then started seeing the son inside his apartment and then one day it just stopped. Number 11. I have a co-worker, male, aged 45, who is a no-nonsense sort of fellow. He doesn't hold much with silliness and doesn't believe in ghosts. So he and I both work at a very fancy antique business. Our boss is a third generation dealer. His personal collection rivals the best in the world. Because of this, when he goes away, he doesn't just have a security system, but a house sitter as well. The job of house sitter almost always falls to my coworker. The house is located in rural Connecticut. It is a circa 1780 center chimney colonial. It was originally built by a prominent and wealthy family in this corner of the state. The house has a couple dark and ominous, fully substantiated stories attached to it. The one that is most relevant to this story, however, relates to a young son of the family who lived in this house circa 1820. During his late teens, he developed a mental illness. Based on the stories surrounding him, one could assume it might have been schizophrenia. Anyway, the family, not knowing what to do with their violent and unpredictable son, locked him in an upstairs bedroom and fed him through a hole that was cut in the wall. The patched hole is still clearly visible, as are the deep gouges in the wood paneling of the room, supposedly the result of his assaults on his surroundings. After a few years, the son managed to hang himself in the room. Last winter, when my co-worker was house-sitting at night, he came into the shop one morning as white as a sheet, clearly shaken up and exhausted. He proceeded to relate to me his experiences from the previous evening. He had been sitting downstairs in the keeping room at about 10pm watching TV. He started hearing strange sounds coming from upstairs, movement and shuffling. He turned the TV off so he could listen better. The movements continued for about 30 seconds while he listened. He decided a bat must have gotten into the house, not uncommon in an 18th century building. As he climbed the back staircase to investigate, he distinctly heard a man's laughter coming from the bedroom at the top left of the staircase, the bedroom where the son had been imprisoned and committed suicide. He said all the hairs stood up on the backs of his arms. He describes the laugh as not good, not happy. 
At this point, he lost all desire to investigate further, scurried back down the stairs, and poured himself a tequila and water, which he slowly sipped while listening to the occasional shuffle or bump from the bedroom. He slept downstairs on the couch that night. Number 10. My grandpa on my mom's side died way before I was born. At the time of his death, my parents had three children. A night soon after the death of my grandpa, my mom and dad were in their room lying in bed and she was crying to him when she said, who's gonna take Dustin, my oldest brother, fishing now? Immediately after this happened, they heard a sound of glass breaking coming from outside their bedroom door. My dad grabs his shotgun and leaves the bedroom to check things out. When he steps out of his room, he notices a picture frame lying face down on the floor. This picture frame was supposed to be above the fireplace about 20 feet away from his bedroom door. He picks it up and it's a picture of my brother and my grandpa fishing. He put the house up for sale the next day. Number 9. My dad's side has stories. He used to tell me stories of his old house where he grew up. There are a couple of stories he told me and they were also backed up by his mom and brothers when I asked them about it. Apparently, stuff happened to them too. Story goes that he was around 10 and home by himself reading comics in his room. As he was reading, he started to hear footsteps coming from the kitchen area. He was about to go and see if it was his brothers or parents coming home, but he got stopped dead in his tracks when he got an overwhelming sense of fear. As he was debating on whether or not to go, he started hearing what sounded like large heavy coins dropping into a bucket full of more coins. This went on for less than a minute. He was torn between wanting to go out and see what the sound was and between being scared to shit. He ended up sitting in his room until he heard his dad drive up. There were a couple other stories they told me about the house. Strange noises, dishes falling out of cupboards, shadows running around outside, a lot of crazy other stories. I never was allowed to stay with my grandma at the house by myself and always got a really weird feeling when I would be by myself in their back room. Always got a feeling like there was someone there with me. Supposedly it was haunted. The man who lived there before had been in World War II and upon his return committed suicide in one of the rooms. My grandfather, strangely enough, committed suicide in the backyard of the same house. My mom lived in the same house with my dad when they were first married. At the time, my dad's brother and mom still lived there as well. My mom told me how one time she was sitting in my dad's old room and heard my dad's brother drive up the driveway, open the front door, and head into his room to start lifting weights. She heard the weights clank together for a good couple of minutes before she decided to go outside. Everyone else was out of the house at the time and she thought he was the first to come back home. But once she opened the door, the wait stopped. She went to talk to my dad's brother, but there was no one in the room and no car in the driveway. As she was standing there, trying to figure out what she had heard, she said she saw my uncle's car drive up. The other was again when my dad was a kid. He was laying in bed sleeping when he saw his other door open and a figure that looked like his mother come in and sat on the bed with him. It was pretty dark so he could only make out the outline of the body. He fell back asleep. In the morning, he asked his mom why she came in like that. She told him that she didn't go into his room. The creepier part to this story is fast forwarding to when I was young. My brother got up one morning to get some water. When he walked out to the kitchen, he saw what looked like my mom sitting at the kitchen table drinking coffee. He went and sat at the table too in the dark and started talking to my mom. She did not reply. This goes on for another minute or so and my brother decides that he's tired and that her mom is still half asleep as well. So he starts to go back to his room and as he does, our parents bedroom opens and my mom walks out. Now my brother, creeped out as fuck, 
turns back to look at the table and does not see anyone there anymore. After that, he refused to get up by himself, never told their parents why. Oh, and to add to the weirdness, my dad committed suicide around 8 years back as well, shot himself under a bridge. Number 8. I had a good friend die when I was 10, we'll call him John. He died pretty tragically too. He was hit by a car literally right in front of my house when he was chasing down a ball that bounced into the road. Fast forward 7 years, I'm babysitting my little sister and she is playing outside. I'm on the porch swing reading and she's shooting hoops on her little tyke's hoop. The ball bounces onto the road and I look up to see her yell, don't go after that ball John, freaked the shit out of me. She never knew about John. I asked her who John was and she said it was a kid that would play with her sometimes outside. Number 7. When I was a kid, I did yard work for this incredibly lovely old couple. They told me that when they moved into their house, they had to empty out a few of the rooms and closets of the previous owner's stuff. After that, they heard bumping sounds like someone wandering around the house in the dark. They called the previous owners to ask if the sounds were a normal thing. Oh, you emptied out the upstairs closet, didn't you? Just put the cane back in the closet so he can see where he's going. Without it, he just stumbles around bumping into things and making noise. They put the cane back and the noises stopped. They left it in that closet for over 30 years until they moved out. I was helping them clear the house when I saw this cane. It was a pretty normal wooden cane with a rubber knot on it, but it had these scorch marks on the end like someone used it to poke at a fire. Then they gave me it. Number 6. Okay, let me start by saying I've never experienced a single paranormal experience in all my 28 years but this one. It happened last year and it still haunts me. The fact it is so incredibly intense and real makes it so much more crazy. I literally start shaking when I think of it. I've only told 3 or 4 people, here it goes was sleeping next to my girlfriend, now wife. She gets up and starts walking around the room with the lights off. About 5 minutes later, she gets back in bed. A few minutes later, I feel strange and look over at my wife. She's sitting straight up. I turn on the light and ask her what's wrong. I get no answer, no acknowledgement, except she starts to kind of breathe loudly. I say her name a few more times and get very little back from her. I start to shake her, I'm really scared she's having a stroke or something, and say her name over and over and over. She finally looks at me and gets a sneer on her face that really freaks me the fuck out. This is the point where I really start to feel like something is really off. I start to say, what's your name, as though I'm talking to someone who just hit their head. In other words, I'm trying to ask her to remember her name to try to draw her out of whatever has her head in the fog. I ask her a few more times, looking in her eyes, when all of a sudden her pupils dilate to the point where they are black. I mean fast too, like from normal to black in a split second. Right after this happens, she says, the devil. It comes out of her in this voice that is not hers. I freak the fuck out grab her and start praying, like really praying, commanding God to get whatever the fuck has just taken over my wife to get out. About 15 seconds or so my wife starts crying, I pull back a little and she just says my name in this terrified confused little animal voice. I hold her for a few minutes, then we talk for a few minutes. She basically says she just felt blackness for a while. She remembers coming to in my arms, that's it. So I'm not even that spiritual of a person, or at least I wasn't until that clusterfuck of a mind altering night. It all happened so fast. I still don't know what really happened, but not a single part of me thinks there's some non-spiritual explanation for it. My wife has never had another experience like that, and I've never had another paranormal experience of any kind. My brother thinks that she just had a mini stroke or something. And from the outside, I would surely say the same thing. Needless to say, I didn't sleep well for a while. 
but as nothing has happened since, my life is entirely back to normal. Number 5. My parents were on their honeymoon to Key West. When they arrived at the hotel to check in, they were told that their room would be non-smoking. With my dad being a smoker, they requested a different room. They got the room switch and went to their room. As they got off the elevator, the smell of fresh paint was overwhelming. Down the hall, there was a painter with all of the necessary supplies laid out around him and was painting the wall. As my parents walked past him, they casually greeted him and the painter had absolutely no acknowledgement of their presence. Whatever. When they got to their room, the smell of paint was even worse in there. So bad, it wasn't even bearable, so they decided to go to the front desk to change rooms. When they explained the situation, the attendant looked very confused and informed them that there wasn't a scheduled paint job on that floor for the day, but agreed to change their room. My parents go back to their floor to grab their luggage and the painter is completely gone. All supplies cleaned up and gone within 10 minutes, and the smell of paint was completely gone too. At this point, my parents were really freaked out, but didn't think much of it and went to their new room. The next morning, on their way to breakfast, they overhear a tour guide talking to a group. My parents tuned in when the guide mentioned the floor they were originally supposed to stay on. Apparently, a long time ago, there was a painter on that floor painting and fell down the elevator shaft to his death. Now my parents don't normally believe in the paranormal, but after an event like this, they had no explanation for it and it freaked them out for a good bit. Number 4. When I was 17, I went to my mate's house for some beers on his birthday. I probably only had about 5 drinks. Come the early hours of the morning, probably around 2 or 3 am, I head out to the kitchen for a drink. I pour a drink of water and turn around and take a big sip. As I'm swallowing, I swear I hear footsteps. The ground in the entire room is all made up of tiles, so I hold my drink down and listen for a few seconds. Next thing I know, I hear fast footsteps in front of me, running towards me, and suddenly a huge cold breeze blew right through me. At that point, I just freaked out and ran back for the bedroom. I ended up waking my friend up and telling him what happened and we listened and we could hear odd bangs and bumps from out there, but nothing out of the ordinary after that ever happened. I still always remember it though, gives me goosebumps telling this. Number 3. My brother was getting to sleep one night when he was about 13 or 14. The lights were off, doors closed, he was settled with his eyes closed. All of a sudden, he gets that feeling that he's being watched by someone. The feeling becomes stronger and stronger, so he pulls the covers over his head, curls into a ball, trying not to freak out. He even starts saying the Our Father prayer when a few lines in, he hears a voice right next to his ear say, that's not gonna help you. He bolted out of the bed, down to the hallway, turned on all the lights, and sat on the stairs for the entire night. Number 2. This was the early 80s, and my sister lived in Toronto. One day, she decided to come down and see some old friends and visit with our parents, who live in a rural area. She stayed late and left around 9pm. This was late fall, so it was nearly pitch black. But about 8 miles into the drive back to town, the car she borrowed broke down. Luckily, she broke down in front of a house. They let her use their phone to call dad to come pick her up. After he came down, the people let her park her car in the driveway until the next day. It was about 10pm when they started driving back to my parents. She decided to stay the night after this. They went through a wooded area, trees as far as the eye could see on both sides when suddenly they hear this incredibly loud, inhuman scream that was louder than the car, even louder than the fucking radio. Dad slams on the brakes and they were like, what the fuck was that? When suddenly something appeared on the side of the road. It was a fucking coyote. Only it was six feet tall 
and walking upright on its hind legs. It crosses in front of the car and went to the other side of the road and that same scream happened again, only 10 times louder than before. Dad slammed on the accelerator and got the fuck out of there. He only told me this once, but the look on his face when he told me and knowing the kind of guy he is, I believe him. Number 1. It started when I got my Ouija board and I never read the rules. My friends were too chicken shit so I did it alone. I talked to two people that day by myself. One was a little boy named Tim who was disowned by his parents and died in the forest. The other presence was much darker and for two questions I asked it would reply death which was not a valid answer. I got angry with the second one and yelled at it to prove its malicious nature to me. Nothing happened. I packed the board away, feeling as if maybe it was me the whole time, which is the common notion for disbelievers. But then the next two months happened. Between 3 and 4 am, I consistently woke up with terror sweats and felt as if I was being watched. About 50 days in, I awoke to the most horrid screaming and a thud so loud I thought someone was breaking in. I jumped up and felt again like someone was in front of me wanting me to die, and yet no sounds from my upstairs housemates. I got so scared that I quit sleeping at night. I would stay up until 6am at least to make sure that the ghost hour wouldn't affect me, but it came anyways. I'll always remember what happened at two months. I was playing COD as typical for the past two weeks and all of a sudden I got this cold chill on my back and it went to my left shoulder and then also onto the left side of my head and I shit you not I heard breathing in my ear. The pressure on my upper left side was if someone or something was leaning its head onto my shoulder. I was frightened to death but I decided fuck this. I got up, swung my fist, and screamed, fuck off and go away. And after that night, it seemed to stay away. I don't know how all this happened, especially when I was such a non-believer. Those months felt like a dream, but I do believe now that certain energies do manifest us and it's best to stay away from the evil hurtful ones. Got an idea for a top 15 list? Be sure to leave it in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching.